Hey guys, it's Ashley Born Nansen here with the Red Carpet Report. We're at Disney Studios today on the set of TNT's show Perception, catching up with the cast and getting some sneak peeks on season two. I'm so nervous. Are you? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I do. Well, yesterday I was nervous. We had upfronts yesterday, and I don't know what it is, but I always get nervous so walking down like, the red carpet. Uh, yesterday was the first time. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's what it is, if I'm going to trip, the or I'm just going to ask the question, and I want to make sure I'm not giving away too much. Yeah. Is that scary? Do they prep, do you have a publicist or someone that preps you ahead of time? Do not say this. Well, here's the thing. I have a, pub I have a, I have a publicist, well, a PR manager, and it's for different reasons. It's like for doing different, for events. But okay. When I was younger, like, I actually had to go through media training. And so I don't have anyone right now that I can go to. Mostly so they'll just send you like a paragraph of stuff from the don't network. Say saying, this. Don't say this. Yeah. Do not say this. Are there like repercussions? Like, RJ, I'm you're sure gonna be like. I haven't experienced them because I'm a good boy. So okay. <laughs> I don't know what those repercussions might be. Okay. I can't tell you, but I don't want to know what they are. So I just follow the rules. Uh, and she keeps me. <laughs> so um, season one, you know, he, his job is to keep. The guy track it, he completely yeah, fell apart. Yeah. So how are how are things this season when it starts? Is he feeling oh, he more on point? Is he still? He still, still no, he still falls apart. <laughs> okay, um, for your character. Oh my character. Like is the pressure on? Is he a little looser because he knows he'll come back? Like how has this affected their relationship? Um, well, as I've been telling everyone, this season, you know, you're going to see a lot more of that relationship between Doctor Daniel Pierce as so roommates, like how they get along in the house. And so the pressure is on both of them. I mean, we, we sometimes we get on each other's nerves, you know, but we love each other at the end of the day. So you see a little bit more of that heartfelt, like, you know, these guys really just care about each other. And yeah, I have a job. It's my job to take care of him, and make sure he's okay, to be that kind of parent, fatherly, motherly, you know, uh, figure. But, um, um, <laughs> but still, we have those moments where we, you know, we just want to kick each other in the butt. And so you're going to see definitely a lot more of that. Um, mm -hmm. But he still has his, we both have our moments where we fall apart. Where it's just, you know, the pressure's on for both of us. And you're going to have to experience that again in season two. Do you yeah. feel like your character's kind of becoming like, almost like a little babysitter for like this older, uh, like, um, older? I kind of feel like I'm already that. Yeah. Uh, I feel like, I feel like Max is, he's a babysitter slash parent. Mm -hmm. But, um. But no, he's definitely becoming even more of like that kind of confidence, like, okay. mm -hmm. you know, where, um, okay. you know, you guys are just <laughs> in the pilot, sick. or the like first episode for season nice. two, yeah, you know, I'm high-fiving him for school, for getting, you know, getting ready, <laughs> you know, it's like, go out there, have some fun, and you know, experience <laughs> life, experience people, you know, yeah. I understand yeah. that you have, I understand you have this condition, but that doesn't mean you have to put, uh, a halt on your life. It doesn't mean you have to just be at a standstill and not experience other people. And mm -hmm. so, even with that encouragement, I'm still there to say, hey, this isn't real. That was real. Mm -hmm. You know, I still understand that that is a, a true reality in his life that he hallucinates. So I don't disregard it, but then I don't want him to become sheltered to where, you know, yeah. he's not having fun. Right. No. In a little way, do you think your character wants to become like a wingman at all? Like, like be a wingman to him? Yeah. Um, or is that just getting too intense? Well, at this point, I would definitely have to say that, you know, Dean Haley is more right. of a wingman for him than I, than I am. Mm -hmm. But um, I, don't, I don't even know what Max means a wingman. I think that's kind of how confident he is. Yeah. Um, but still, you know, Max this is, is a, movie he's a, he's a nerd, <laughs> but he's a confident nerd. Uh -huh. And I don't even know if I want to call him a nerd. I would just say he's a young man that knows what he wants in life. Mm -hmm. And one thing you guys will see in season two is a little bit more of Max's backstory. Like, um, why his last name is Lewicki. Well. He's an African American who has a Polish last name. It has to be a story to that. And we explain what that story is. So just things of that nature. And, you, and with that story too, once you kind of see that episode, you'll find out where a lot of Max's confidence comes from. You know, his experiences, his life experiences, there's a reason why he is the way he is, why he acts the way he acts. And so, yeah, we'll get to, I will be revealed. But I don't know if Max needs a, a wingman. No, he got action last season, although it didn't woman. end very well. He might need a woman. Yeah. Ooh. A love go. interest. Will he get into any of the cases this year? I feel like the only one was what he, what he got. Wait, I can't even quite remember what happened. Did some, she was somehow connected to stuff. And well, she, yeah, she was kind of, well, she was a little loony. And that was the girl that he ended up, then he ended up like, this season, 
Um, Max definitely gets to be a part of some of the cases a little bit more, which I think was a lot of fun. Yeah, I think that was definitely fun, not just from a character's perspective, but from an actor's perspective, because it just, you know, it gives me a lot more to do, um, it just kind of broadens the depth of my character, and then as an actor, it just gives me more to, you know, to, to um, just kind of bring to life, and just to experience it more work-based. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so interesting because it's such a long break in between seasons. Oh, yeah. I feel like it would be really hard to go from shooting all the time, crazy schedule, to I don't know what your schedule looks like when you're not shooting. Well, when I'm not shooting, um, on, on a personal end, you know, I'm involved in various other things. I do voiceovers, um, okay. I do music, mm -hmm. and I spend a lot of time with my family. Mm -hmm. So pretty much I, I don't really have a lot of idle time. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest thing when you have the big gaps in the season, I'm constantly auditioning for other characters. You know, Max is a character. And so when I'm auditioning for other roles, for other projects, when we come back to our seasons, I have to come back to the mentality of Max Lewis. Yeah. So with the one yeah. last time, I remind mean, myself, okay, what is Max into? What does Max yeah. do? Where does Max, you know, where's his mind at? Where's his, you know, what is his social interest? Yeah. And then you get back into that groove, and then you, you just not going to have another season. And then once this season's done, you go into a new mind frame of a new character, whatever that project, or most of the time it's just me being RJ. So that's my, <laughs> that's my most of my life, me being me. But uh, yeah, it's it's um it's a crazy schedule, but it's a lot of fun, and I'm pretty sure, you know, fingers crossed, we'll get a season three, and mm -hmm. it'll be a less of a gap. You know, yeah, that'd be awesome. So, yeah. Do you watch the episodes? I do, absolutely. And not just because I have to, but because I want to. I really do. Um, I watch the episodes. I've seen a couple episodes already of season two. And, Do you um, like manipulate yourself when you're watching? You know, like um, you're, you, they say like yourself is, it, is your biggest critic. Yeah, you know, you are. You are. Um, it's been 20 years that I've been doing this, and, wow. and um, I'm so still, young. <laughs> Were you like uh, three when you started? <laughs> I was. I was. I was nine years old okay. when I started this, and um, <laughs> when I was young, I wasn't as critical of myself. For some reason, when I was. Younger. Oh wow, that's me. Yeah. As I got older, I was like, okay, I really want this to be a career, a successful career. And really start fine tuning some things. And yeah, I watch every episode, even on our show, just to critique what I could do better the next go around. Um, it's like being in a sport, you know. You're Kofi Bryant and you're about to play on the Lakers. He goes home, he watches all his footage. The team watches footage from previous games to see what they can correct. Same thing as an actor. You know, you watch your footage, you see, ah, oh, maybe I could have done this reaction a little bit differently. Okay, you go practice that and then you just take it as a, as a correction for the next one. Do you, how do you gauge yourself as um, a crime solver? Like, do you know before you get to the end of the script who did it? Do I? I or do you read the, I mean, maybe you, you wait till you watch the whole thing. I don't know, but when you get the full story, like, are you pretty good at guessing who did it? Sometimes. Sometimes. And, and I will say as, as an actor, it's always cool to not know. So sometimes even if I feel I might know, I'll play it as if I don't. Because I want to kind of have a genuine suspense and surprise. Like, oh, okay, I didn't see it going there. Um, for each episode, obviously, I know how it begins right. and how it ends. But um, but it's always cool to. Uh, I, I tend to like to wait till we have our table reads before I read a full script. Sometimes, like I'll read a little bit, but then I'll wait to finish it until the table read, just because I want to see how it pans out at the end, yeah. hearing everyone read, you know, the characters and the dialogue. So, in the first season, what was? It doesn't have to be a crime thing. Of mm -hmm. all the twists, what was the one that you most were just like, what? In season one? Yeah. Um, oh boy. You know what? And this is not being corny, but it, the, the pilot was a cool twist because see, when I auditioned for the show, I didn't know about it. I'm like, okay, I'm playing a guy who helps someone, but you don't really have a full understanding of what the show is about. So when I finally saw the pilot, like seeing it, read it, and it was like, wow. It was even a shock for me just seeing the whole hallucination factor, mm -hmm. um, which a lot of my friends dug. They thought that was so cool. Like, dude, I didn't really know how you were how they were gonna do that. But when you see on television, like, you think you're seeing a scene where he's actually talking to someone. But then the camera will, will do a reverse, and you're like, oh, no one's really there. Yeah. And, at, and acting on the show. It's a lot of fun, but it was a little challenge at first because okay. we're doing a scene. If you remember the scene uh, with the guy in the sweatpants when we're in the kitchen and I've just made up some breakfast, mm -hmm. and yeah, and I'm talking to Eric, and there's another guy in the room, and when you're doing the scene, that guy's actually there. Yeah, I hear him. No, he's audible. I'm like, you're there, 
but all my I have to cut off my peripherals. It's like yeah. I can't see you. I yeah. have to act as if you're not there. And so that becomes, you know, was a challenge in the beginning, but you're, I'm acclimated to it now. Mm -hmm. just, I know how to just, you know, block everything else out, and it's just me and Eric. But then there are those moments when there, are, there is someone there, which if you remember the pilot, he asked me to go into the room. He was like, hey, is there a young lady? And then there was, she was half naked. Um, <laughs> So those moments are fun as well where you're like, okay, I, I can actually respond to the person who's in the room. So the pilot still for me is uh, is a great was a great twist and a great way to introduce the show. Um, some of the episodes this season, which I can't talk about. That was that paragraph. Yeah, that was that paragraph. That was so the there, there's paragraph. some more good twists like that oh, yeah. coming? Definitely, definitely so. Cool. Definitely so. Yeah. Like, that, how is your next gets to be a part of as well too. Well obviously that must be fun also because I mean, you really didn't work with anybody else last season. Really. Occasionally, the Dean. Occasionally, we did have me and Dean and Ellie have a lot more interaction this season, and me and Rachel. Um, His character seems to be the most shaky. Like, everyone else in the pilot, in the premiere mm -hmm. seems like who we remember them being, you know right. what I mean? Right. But he's kind of loosened LeVar. up a little. He's looking to get some action. Yeah, LeVar, LeVar. <laughs> well, the thing I love, too, about the pilot is, you know, his character was a little more reserved, but you definitely get to see why these guys are friends. You know, there's a reason why... Dean Haley and Dr. Pierce are friends, so let's see what that reason is, and mm -hmm. definitely find out that Dean Haley, even though he's a Dean, you know, large character, he has, he's very sophisticated, but he's a wild boy, mm -hmm. kind of tell, he's got a little wild side, and he was probably more of Eric's wingman when they were, or, you know, Dr. Daniel Pierce's wingman growing up, trying to get him to, you know, hey, go talk to her, go yeah. talk to her, so yeah, he definitely loosened up, loosens up in this season. It's fun, it gives him another light note. No, it does, it does, it brings a light, not, definitely one thing with this season, you know, there's a certain level of levity we're bringing to lighten it up, but there's also some social topics that we're tackling, you know, that are real life, it's like, this is real life. Like mental stuff, or, or just all kinds of social stuff? Economies, social stuff, mm. just, the, um... And, um, uh, so it's not that that's you know, not a, a some fun very, place very, to very, very well. heavy topics. So that have things that are that are going on at the, you know, it's right it's now as we speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're touching on that. And you've already touched on a lot of like you know mental topics as well. Obviously, mm -hmm. what has been your audience feedback on that? Um, it's actually been very positive. Um, the, I, was, I mentioned this um, just a second ago and then earlier um, last week. I was talking to someone about a gentleman I met this year who's actually on our crew. Mm -hmm who had a brother-in-law who um, was schizophrenic. That's a, that's a very and <laughs> he said that his brother-in-law actually had an episode very similar to Eric's episode in the season finale of season one. Wow. Where if you remember Eric's character just destroyed the entire house. Mm -hmm. uh, I was gone for a weekend. Um, I met someone that actually had a relative that experienced that same thing. Wow. And um, so yeah. It's, it, it hits home for a lot of people, so and I'm learning a lot more, obviously, with the show, meaning people who have dealt with schizophrenia or have relatives. Just recently, Eric was honored by the uh, UCLA Neuroscience Division mm -hmm. um, with the honor in him playing a character um, uh, who has schizophrenia. And, um, no, you find, you definitely find that it's a, it's a big issue. A lot of people are dealing with it, but... Um, what so I love about shows that we're highlighting it not in the negative sense. Mm -hmm. If you notice most shows, if you're dealing with yeah. a schizophrenic, he or she's out killing people, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. cutting themselves. I mean, just mm -hmm. something very pessimistic. Mm -hmm. I mean, or something very detrimental to themselves or to others. Yeah. Maybe Eric's character, he's, 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 you know, he's managing it, but he's uh, functioning. Schizophrenic, mm -hmm. And he's helping people. Yeah. Well, you wonder how far she's going to disassociate this season. Well, yeah. I mean, that's the fear. That's the fear. Why well, you don't know, and that, and it's a condition where you just mm -hmm. he doesn't know where it might take him. You know, right. that's mm -hmm. how crazy it is, and so we'll get to see that. But I love the fact that our show is approaching it, mm -hmm. approaching it from a positive. You know, it's yeah. not it's not negative, negative, derogatory. So I love that. So, how has your perception on the world changed? <laughs> wow, that's the name of your show. <laughs> how has my perception of the world changed since the show? Yeah. Um, I, I think I saw an interview saying that you learn something from each episode you do. Well, every episode you definitely learn. Um, medically, you know, mm -hmm. different terminologies, different things. You you pick up different things on that end. Um, I would have to say the biggest lesson I've had just being on the show when it comes to perception is judgment. Um, be careful of who you judge, how you judge, 
because you don't really oh, you know the true story yeah, until you really oh, well, get sure to know someone and talk to someone. Outwardly, it, it's perceived one way, mm -hmm. but misjudgments are, are made mm -hmm. all the time mm -hmm. due to someone's perception. And generally, our perceptions are based on what we've been taught, mm -hmm. um, our social influence, you know, where we're raised, mm -hmm. our economy, and um, the best way to find out more well, about like he other people him. and I mean, other conditions, really uh, schizophrenia, is, yeah. Yeah. is to actually yeah. research it yourself uh -huh. and and uh, you know jump into that world. If you don't, then you're just kind of I don't know. You're just basing you're basing your perception all on what you think, yeah. and it's not pure fact. Do you so. think, as an actor, you know you're in the limelight all the time? Do you think people ever perceive you oh, differently? Yeah. Really? In what way? In what way? <laughs> I'm one of the, I, I, I'm, I'm an actor who doesn't walk around 24-7 as an actor. Yeah. I'm an actor when they say action. I'm an actor when they say cut. Mm -hmm. When I go home to my family, I'm R.J. Smith. And even here, though, I'm still R.J. Smith. But yeah. the only time I'm acting is when I'm Max Lewicki, and I'm saying Max Lewicki bad. Well, you know, outside of that, I'm a dude who likes to, I like to get coffee beans. I like Starbucks. I, I like juice. I like to go to the movies sometimes. Wait, you'll get coffee bean or Starbucks I'll when do. I'm a favorite? Well, I, I love coffee, so. Yeah. <laughs> I go to coffee bean for my ice drink and sometimes Starbucks for my coffee bean. So it depends on the mood. <laughs> I really do. I hate coffee bean. It, so it really depends on the mood. Yeah. So I, I tell people all the time. That's great. You know, as an actor, it's my profession, it's my job. <laughs> Yeah, but I get perceived. Really really um, I have people who judge me all the time. They think I'm a certain way. I wave at people who are just staring at me. Like, literally just staring. That. And I'm like, hey, I see you. Like, <laughs> What's up? What's up? And they're like, me? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> No one does that. Come say hi. No, and no one does that. <laughs> does, does, do people come say hi? Or do, do they? I've had people that come up. Okay. I've had people that come up to me. But the funniest one though is most of the time it's. Um, Did I go to high school with you? How do I know you? Who's your mama? Yeah. Do I know your grandma? I'm like, no, I know I don't know you personally. And I, I, At what point do you, you ever say? Up? Or no, do you just not Most say? Most of the time, I just, I'll let them walk away thinking yeah. they know me personally. <laughs> you let them tor torture themselves? Because that's one of the things in L.A. is, especially if you grew up here. Right. Because I grew up here and too. I'm always like, wait, are you on TV or do we go to high oh, see, school together? It. And yeah. that's why I don't, I never, I generally, I, maybe once or twice I've said, well, I'm an actor, but generally I just let them think they know me. Sometimes people do, they'll ask a question, they'll say, okay, you said no to every other question. This might seem weird, but are you an actor? And I'm like, yes, I am. And they're like, oh, and that's why you just made me look stupid for two hours. You could just say that. And I'm like, well, I didn't want to be, I, I didn't want to judge or perceive that, you know, that maybe I, I might have known you personally because I'm from Los Angeles County. Sometimes there are okay. people that maybe I've met on the street before, they met me somewhere. What's been like um, your weirdest interaction? With a fan? Yeah. When someone actually, the weirdest thing is when the fans actually know your name. Because I'm not used to someone saying, hey, R.J. Smith. Mm -hmm. Do I know you? <laughs> That's when I say, do, 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 do you go to high school? Does he have coffee beans? Do you know my mom? <laughs> I don't know my name. Do you know my and, mom? <laughs> and they're like, no, I, just, I, watch your, I watch your show. I watched you since you've been doing this since you were a kid. Aww. And it's like, oh, wow, you know, people actually do pay attention. They mm -hmm. recognize your name. And so that has been a, a different experience for me. Yes. But, um, but it's been a very humbling experience, though, when someone comes up to you and says your full name. Uh, I was in a clothing store one time, and a guy actually said, are you R.J. Smith's actor? I said, yes, I am. How <laughs> did yeah, you know my name? He's like, well, if you're R.J. Smith, the actor, I'm like, oh, wow, well, people watching your name on the credits, so it's cool. Is there anyone that you would meet and be like a little bit search up or you'd be like, are you, you know, um, Kate Winslet, the actor? Oh, gosh, who would I be nervous? Um, I got very uh, youthful and bubbly when I make uh, Carrie Washington. Oh, really? Yeah. Like I, went, I just kind of went back to an adolescent state where I was just like, hi, how are you? <laughs> You're awesome. Um, but no, I, I think honestly being in this business for so long, um, yeah, I understand that there. I understand that there are people as well. So yeah. it's more so not a. It's not a. Oh my gosh! You know, yeah. I, I worship the ground you walk on. It's just more so. I appreciate your work and I respect what you've done. Your work is amazing. I understand what you go through on a daily basis as a actor or actress. So it's more so that approach when I see someone. Um, there's definitely people I look for. To working with you know, in my lifetime, um, but 
I definitely have that approach. It's just so, um, yeah. But yeah, those Do you think like actors, given that it's such a different industry, have to like marry other actors or um, like? <laughs> I know this is a weird topic, no, no, but okay. we we went there. Cool you know what I mean? It's just such a different. If you're a successful actor or successful actress, I don't think it's mandatory that you have to date another successful actor or sexual, successful actress. I think you should just date someone who's successful. So that could be a successful doctor, yeah. a successful makeup artist, a successful yeah. producer, a successful teacher. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's more so where you have to mm -hmm. find common ground. Because mm -hmm. at this point, you know, I, I don't necessarily feel I have to date someone who's an actress. Yeah. Um, I just meant to understand the nature of the business. I think, yeah. so, I think it's more so someone who understands so, um, the stress um, and okay. what it takes to be successful. That makes sense. You know, um, mm -hmm. I have never heard that answer before. I'm glad you asked it then. Yeah, I get that though because how, how would someone that's striving after something every day be able to date someone who's like, uh, I'm kind of into right. teaching, why but kind of not. Why do you have to go to astronaut school every day? Well, I want to be an astronaut, yeah. uh, you know, so yeah. it's like my Same schedule is pretty heavy. So, as, a, as an actor, I was dating a young lady who was an astronaut, and she's like, hey, honey, I gotta be gone for two months because I gotta go to such and such school. With next, I'm like, see you when you get back. Love you. Because I gotta go shoot a film in such and such for two months. So, we'll both, so that understanding, I wouldn't stress her out on. Why do you have to be gone all the time? Why is your job so demanding? My job's not mm -hmm. Love it. That's well, thank you. thank you. Thank you. I think you have to head back. back. Okay. Thanks for watching the Red Carpet Report. If you like this video, be sure to like it and and for more interviews, subscribe. And be sure to watch the season premiere of Perception on June 25th.